Goma is probably the most dangerous city in the world because of natural disaster. There is not only the volcano, there is the earthquake, there is the gas coming out from several areas around the city and inside the city. But the volcano is very close. It's now only a few kilometers and the fracture can open inside the city of Goma. What you're seeing is the aftermath of what happened on the night of 22nd May 2021. As the residents of Goma in Congo were getting ready to rest for the night, then suddenly they see this big red glow in the sky. What they were seeing was Mount Niragonga erupting. And they knew what that meant. They had minutes to leave that area. So what was supposed to be a night of rest became a night of mass exodus. The eruption resulted in 32 deaths and 400,000 people were displaced. Of course, most of them have now returned, but 4,000 homes were destroyed. It's not the first time this is happening. Goma is a city that's constantly sitting on a time bomb. In 1977 and 2002, the volcano erupted, resulting in more than 800 deaths in total. At some point, you might have wondered why a warning was not given, or why are people living here in the first place? Hold on, you will soon understand. First, let's see why Mount Niragongo keeps erupting. And to explain this, I have to take you right to the top of the mountain. Niragongo is part of the famous Virunga Mountains found in the African Rift. The earth beneath this region consists of fractures and faults, and the tectonic plates here are constantly pulling apart. And when that happens, sometimes it creates an opening through which lava comes out. This is what is known as a volcanic eruption. What makes this volcano so unique is that it has this huge 2 km wide lava lake at its top. This, by the way, is not some computer graphics. It's actual footage of the lake taken in 2016. While still thinking about that boiling hot lake at the top, let's turn to this other side of the mountain. Some 15 km downhill is the city of Goma. If a fracture occurs in the wrong place within this system, this lake could drain its contents towards the city. This is what happened in all the three eruptions that have occurred. We spoke to Dr. Robbins, a volcanologist who has written extensively about volcanoes, and he explains just how uniquely dangerous this volcano is. So Nairagongo is a very active volcano in the sense that it's had a lava lake for quite some time and um, it, it erupts relatively frequently, uh, spilling lava uh, onto its surroundings. The, one of the main reasons it's dangerous is uh, its lava is incredibly fluid. So um, it's not got much silica in it, and silica acts as like a, a skeleton in, in lava. So the more silica you have, the, 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 the less runny it is. But in Nairagongo, there's so little silica in it that it's been seen to move at, um, you know, 40 miles an hour. So it's very, very fast. And if it erupts high up on uh, the mountain, the steep slope means that it gets a speed boost as well. In 2002, the cracks occurred in these points causing lava to be ejected. This is a satellite image showing how it flowed. It cut through the middle of the city and flowed into Lake Kivu. Following this, an advisory was given warning residents not to construct on the path the lava had followed. But see what happens in the years that follow. There is an influx of people fleeing the civil war in the countryside, causing a rapid population growth, and they begin building right on the path of lava, a place they shouldn't. Now look at the path the lava followed in this last eruption. It's similar to that of the year 2002, but the path is now full of homes which explains why so many houses were destroyed. Yes, an eruption is dangerous, but there's another invisible danger, which is really freaky. The magma that it taps often has a lot of carbon dioxide in it. So every, uh, every year um, people die, when, even when the volcano isn't really erupting, because uh, the magma is letting off this carbon dioxide underground, and that goes into... Uh, you know, bodies of water, and it slowly seeps out. And because carbon dioxide is invisible, it's odorless, and it um, it's denser than air, it sinks into these sort of low-lying areas. So if people accidentally walk into them, they can, they can suffocate. 
I said to myself, I can't go alone. We've been married for the best and for the worst. I went back to at least try to get him out, but couldn't. I ran away and he got burned inside. I don't know what to do. I curse this day. Given this dangerous setup of the city, why didn't the government give a prior warning to its residents so that they could evacuate in good time? Maybe that could have saved Kabuo's husband. We try to use some scenarios and see what will come in the future and the simulation we carried out has shown that there is a danger if you know there is no change in the current behavior there is the agenda around march 2024 and uh, november 2027 that is kacho karume he leads the goma volcano observatory an institution set up in 1986 to specifically monitor this volcano and give a warning in case it's about to erupt in September 2020, he said that the earliest it could erupt is 2024, but it erupted in 2021. So what happened here? Something that's really important to note is uh, this eruption, as far as anyone can tell at the moment, didn't have any precursors so it had no warning signs. So often, more often than not, volcanoes do something to indicate that they are probably going to erupt. It's, there's no certainty, but often... There's a distinct change in the gas coming out of them, the shape of the volcano, or the, the, the earthquakes they make. And if there's a change in all three, generally you think, well, okay, maybe there's an eruption coming. Um, but in this case, uh, scientists have looked at the data and they haven't yet found any clear indication uh, of a precursor, which means that this eruption genuinely did happen as a surprise. People are back and rebuilding their lives again. But this lava lake will still be here. In fact, it has always been here. The people found it. Anytime an eruption could happen again. So the question is, what needs to be done to avoid even worse disasters in future? One thing that can be done is that scientists are already working on trying to work out like what the most common kind of eruption style is, when there are lava flows, where which paths they are most likely to take, because lava still has to still obeys gravity, uh, and and it's roughly speaking heads down the slope that's steepest so you can kind of map out where it's likely to go and where it's less likely to go uh and if uh they if that's communicated to the city authority is enough then hopefully when new parts of the city are built um they avoid areas that are known to be more likely to experience lava flows it's very difficult um i think it always be a very dangerous you know volcano and it's that risk to the city will always be there. Um, but I think the more, the, the better the observatory is funded um, and the better, uh, um, the more they're allowed to communicate to the public uh, uh, openly, I think, the better the, uh, the people of Goma and around the world will actually know what's going on.